Welcome to Tamara Lynette Tales. I'm Tamara and I spill the tea on your favorite reality stars. Married at First Sight After Party Season 15 Episode 11. So this episode featured Son of a Mitch, Nate, and Weeping Willow. The signature cocktail was called the Digging Up Dirty Martini and it featured vodka, olive juice, and olives for garnish. They showed the clip where Nate's dad got choked up talking about being a single father. Nate said he was taken back by seeing his dad cry for the first time. So growing up, they struggled. They ate top ramen and hot dogs for dinner sometimes. He said they had the basics like a bed and a home, but when it comes to emotions, like that wasn't really there. His dad worked all the time, so Nate made most of his own decisions, which got him in trouble running in those streets. He just said, you've met your mom only once. Like, how do you think that has affected your relationships with women? He said he tends to lack empathy. Stasha is teaching him how to dig deeper. So it sounds like Stasha had a legit beef with him about being only surface level when it comes to his feelings. And Miss Stasha was not having it. She's like, mm-mm, talk to me. Tell me what you're thinking for real, for real. So Keisha said to all of them that they had similar childhoods and asked how it has affected them as adults. Son of a Mitch said his dad basically raised them and he grew up as a latchkey kid, which is a term for a kid who would let themselves into a house after school and have no adult supervision until like a parent or guardian got home from work. He said at the time it seemed amazing because he could have friends over and wreak havoc in the neighborhood. But once he hit high school and saw how some of his friends who had both parents in the house lived, he realized that was what being a family was all about. Okay, so this kind of explains why he tends to rebel when people ask him to do something and he seems to struggle with compromise. So Weeping Willow didn't have either parent around and he said that not having his dad around didn't affect him. It just taught him that he wanted to be around for his kids. So Keisha said, it did affect you. It taught you what not to do. I was surprised to hear him say that he wasn't affected by not having his dad around. Like clearly a father figure would have taught him to always wear long sleeves to catch those tears. Keisha showed the clip where Son of a Mitch took Kristen to see his father's gravesite. He said it was special to share that with Kristen, and he thinks his dad would have liked that Kristen is strong enough to put him in his place and let him know when he's out of line. So it's nice to hear that Kristen has been putting up a fight in this marriage and not completely allowing Son of a Mitch to walk all over her. So Keisha said, we only got to see a small part of them at the cemetery. Like, what else do we miss? He said they also visited his aunt and grandparents who were buried there. Then Keisha asked Nate and Weeping Willow what the biggest strength in Son of a Mitch's and Kristen's marriage was. They both were silent and Keisha called them out like, what? Crickets? Y'all don't have anything to say? Nate says he thinks that they are very firm on what they believe, which is a good thing until they have a disagreement, then it's a challenge. Speaking up for themselves is all they have going for them. <laughs> This marriage is worse than I thought. Then they showed a clip of Son of a Mitch reading his letter to his younger self and tearing up. Coming out of the clip, he was a little teary-eyed. He said he's always journaled, but hearing his thoughts read out loud gave it a different feeling, and it was very liberating. He's a journaler? Okay, I didn't picture that. I imagine all of his writing would be to state officials about the ozone layer depletion or something. So Keisha asked him what he's learned from watching himself on the show, and he said he's seeing how he comes across to other people. Apparently he was trying to be perfect, but it came off as being judgmental and prickly. And prickly is putting in nicely, son of a Mitch. So while he was watching the wedding episode, he said he was freaking out, but he thought he was playing it cool, but he said, clearly I was not. Overall, it was painful for him to watch how he affected other people. So the theme here seems to be a lack of self-awareness. If he doesn't gain a lifelong marriage from the show, which I doubt he will, at least he's learned that he came across as being kind of rude, whatever that's worth. And if this isn't your first time watching one of my videos and you haven't subscribed, I would very much appreciate it. Thank you. He 
Tisha showed a clip of Weeping Willow talking to Alexis about his childhood where his brother would constantly tell him to figure it out. Keisha said that Alexis puts up a tough exterior, but she could see a softness in her during that segment. And Weeping Willow said, yeah, it was nice that she was supportive, but it's easy to say you understand. But when they get into arguments after that and the effects of his childhood upbringing are in the mix, she doesn't acknowledge it and understand. Instead, apparently she just proceeds to argue. So Alexis, is your being understanding actually you just playing it up for the cameras? Or once he starts crying, you just go ham? So Keisha asked him where his mother was growing up and he said she struggled with finances. He was a growing kid and ate a lot. So his brother hated seeing their mom struggle and was in a financial position to help. So he kind of took over. So Weeping Willow said he still kind of has a little PTSD from how his brother raised him because he instilled in him not to depend on anybody and just figure things out for himself. So Keisha said, okay, so he was teaching you to survive. Now you have to learn how to thrive. Chow, his brother was teaching Weeping Willow not to come to him with his problems. So Keisha asked him what he's learned about himself. And he says, I get in my head that he's probably probably messed up friendships and relationships by creating a narrative in his head that probably wasn't true. So this was a big epiphany for him. Now I've met people like that who want to sit there and tell you why you said what you said and the story behind why you said it and who you think you are. Oh, maybe that's me who does that. Never mind. This is where the episode got good because we got to hear the guys take on what was going on between these two. They showed a clip of Caddy talking to the group about Ben backstabbing her. So Weeping Willow said he was frustrated with Caddy because she made Ben out to be malicious and that's not his character. So Nate says he feels like the root issue here is Alexis. Because if you are pillow talking with your wife, that private information is not meant to be shared. And Alexis betrayed that trust by going to Caddy and snitching. Weeping Willow agreed with Nate because breaking his trust killed his friendship with Ben. So I agree and disagree. Yes, Caddy probably wouldn't have found out if Alexis never told her, but Ben did the same thing Alexis did. Caddy was pillow talking with Ben and he shared that information with Weeping Willow. So Ben and Alexis did the same thing. I don't like how Caddy handled it though. As the saying goes, it's not about what happens to you, but how you react. Cussing him out multiple times, throwing the flowers on the ground and finding ways to punish him is over the top. Just tell Ben you're done and play out the contract with the show living from home already. So son of a Mitch said he went into that room team Ben 100%, but after hearing Caddy's side of the story, he did a 180, especially after hearing Ben say that he was dishonest. So Keisha asked Weeping Willow if hearing Caddy's side of the story changed anything, and he just straight up said, nope. So Nate said that after hearing her side of the story, he learned that Ben was telling white lies, but then he kind of rolled it back from calling them white lies and said that he basically didn't share all the information and exaggerated certain things that skewed the real stories in certain instances. So it sounds like he was trying to gloss over things that he said and did to make himself look better. In other words, Ben would make a good politician. So Keisha asked them all, like, what do you think is the main issue here? Do you feel like they're sabotaging, like looking for an out? And everyone seemed to agree that the answer is no. Nate said Ben doesn't like conflict, so he's going to say things to avoid conflict. Okay, so I'm thinking when Caddy told Ben not to talk to Weeping Rillow and he agreed, he had no intention of honoring that, but he knew she would be upset, so he lied and said he wouldn't talk to Weeping Willow and continued to lie about it to avoid her wrath. Well, like Dr. Phil likes to ask, Ben, how did that work out for you? So Keisha asked them if they thought Caddy and Ben can get past this. Mitch said, I don't know. It's not looking good. And Nate says he thinks Caddy needs to let down her wall. And Weeping Willow chimed in, shaking his head like, "Ooh, yes, she do. So Nate continued by saying that Ben needs to be a little more open and transparent. Like those two things are all they need to be better. I believe that Caddy is completely done with Ben and is just there to make him pay at this point. I don't know what Ben expects to come out of trying to make things work with her. Like, dude, you're literally afraid of your wife. And rightfully so, because she's probably in the kitchen somewhere brewing up a potion to penalize you for talking to Weeping Willow. One of y'all need to call time of death for this relationship already. And I'll holla at you later.